In our first segment on the Golan, we rose up from the Sea of Galilee up onto the Golan Heights. Next, we visited the Canateer Synagogue, one of 30 synagogues that have now been found in the Golan. Now we leave that synagogue, located near the kibbutz Natur, and head back out onto the plains. Here, you can see how flat most of the Golan Heights is. This is the beautiful grazing land that attracted the tribe of Manasseh when the 12 tribes originally conquered the land. Manasseh, as you can imagine, loved the sprawling plains and they loved their independence out here. Back then, these heights were called the Bashan. Who knows if the Amorite king Og, who ruled the Bashan Heights, had not attacked Israel on their way to the Promised Land, maybe this land would have not become part of Israel so quickly. That story happened three and a half thousand years ago, or should I say 50 years ago, because just over 50 years ago the Syrians held this ground. They frequently harassed Israel on the other side of the River Jordan with artillery shells for 18 years from 1948 to 1966. But in 1967, they too attacked Israel fully and lost everything. By the way, you can do a search on the number 18 in the Bible, both the Hebrew and the Greek, and find other examples of an 18-year enemy occupation followed by freedom in the 19th year. But that's another story. We're not going to tell the 67 war in Golan right now, but there is something we can see right here, right now, on the Golan Heights that made history back then in 67. What is it? It's something that made the Golan Heights victory very quick and decisive in 67. And it happened because of Israeli spy Eli Cohen. Eli was born into a devout Jewish Zionist family in Egypt. He immigrated to Israel in 1949 and was eventually recruited by the Mossad, who had considered and passed over him many years earlier. In 1961, they sent him into Syria as an Argentine businessman to infiltrate Syrian high society and government. Lavish parties, proposed business deals, connections into the government. Sounds like movie material, doesn't it? The movie came out in 1987. So what did Ellie do for Israel in the Golan Heights? Once he got invited to tour the Golan and there he collected intelligence on the positions of the Syrian fortifications. But what he is most famous for is getting the Syrians to plant trees near their fortifications. How in the world could he have done this? Now the real story may not be fully known, but it's told that when he heard the Syrian soldiers complaining about the heat, he suggested that the Syrians do what the Israelis were doing, camouflage and plant trees to have shade protection from the sun. Make it look natural. How could they have fallen for this? Here's something I was thinking. You know, the Israeli citizens were all planting trees near their residences. So the idea that the Israeli soldiers might plant trees as well could be a sort of camouflage to make it look like there are Israeli citizens at those locations. Perhaps that's the logic behind the lie that Eli fabricated. Eli was eventually found out by the Syrians and they hanged him as a spy in 1965. But they never moved the trees, and the Israeli army was told to watch out for fortifications located near any young planted trees. Today, you can still see some Syrian fortifications, 
and perhaps a few of the original trees initiated by Ellie Cohen. In our next segment, we will take you inside the Syrian headquarters for the Golan. Today, they call it the Syrian ghost town. Until then, Shalom.